Hi, I'm Jean Schumacher, founder of Simply Plant Base, where I have programs to help you to change your health destiny, including the Pregnancy Advantage, where Dr. Deborah Shapiro, who is an OBGYN, she and I help women to get their bodies pregnant ready or to help heal their bodies if dealing with infertility issues, as well as the Plant-Based Academy, where I provide help, support, guidance, and resources to switch to a plant-based lifestyle. Tonight, I have the privilege to connect with Dan Purges, who is the co-author of the book, Disease Reversal, Hope, with an exclamation point, which has now been made into a movie. So Dan, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me here tonight. Sure, my pleasure. Well, okay, share, share with us your story. What, what made you go plant-based? Well, uh, before I share my story, let me share something else with you. Maybe you can help me with it, okay? Because you were talking about the physician, I forgot her name that you mentioned. Right? Deborah Shapiro. Right. Uh, uh, some time ago, you know Michael Greger. Of Mike course. Greger, Dr. Greger, right. He posted a vlog of talking about endometriosis, menstrual cycles that lasted as long as three weeks and then would start again. Terrible pain. There was a clinical study that was done where these women were given certain seaweed, commonly available seaweed in capsule form. And the improvement was beyond belief. Dr. Greger said, unfortunately, there's been no follow-up trials. This was only done with three women and there was never a follow-up trial. And I could not understand that. And I spoke to him about that. And he said, well, Dan, most research studies and grants are handled by men. So they are not attuned to the sufferings of women, especially menstrual issues. And I told him that I would be willing to fund a clinical study involving a much larger number of women, 40, 50, 60, whatever, whatever the biostatisticians think is adequate to have definitive results you know, clinically significant results. And so I thought I'd mention that to you because I'm looking to connect with OBGYNs who might wish to conduct a study like this. Well, okay. I'm just going to tell you straight up, Deborah will be all over this. <laughs> Put we me have in been, touch with her. I, we've I, been I, trying to do a study for sure on women because so many, and we've seen the changes in, in women who have had endometriosis, like stage four, one was literally, literally on the table, 27 years of age and, and ready to have surgery for a complete hysterectomy at 27. Oh. And her mother, she didn't have the surgery for a while, but her mother had started her on a plant-based diet and her mother, you know, did this and within six weeks, I guess, between the time she started and, and it finished she was on the table under sedation, under anesthesia. And the surgeon said, brought her out. You know, he went under the hood and said, oh my God, you're healing. And brought her out of an anesthesia and said, what are you doing? And Incredible. she said, I changed my diet. He's like, keep it up. And he didn't do the hysterectomy. She went on to have three children. She was basically wow. told she couldn't have children. Incredible. So for what it's worth, Dr. Greger and I spoke about how the uh, whole food plant-based diet could greatly help women who have endometriosis and related problems and issues. But in particular, the seaweed it, called bladderwrack, it's very commonly available. And apparently it has natural ingredients that seem to help a great deal. Wow. Wow. Okay. Now let's get back to your question. Okay. <laughs> so share your story with us. What made you go plant-based? All right. So I was a vegetarian for most of my life. My older sister had been a nutritionist. And when I was 18, she convinced me through rational argument that vegetarian way to go is the vegetarian diet is the way to go. Unfortunately, it was not vegan. It was vegetarian. 
So for about 40 odd years, I was vegetarian and I knew there was uh, serious heart disease in my family on both sides. And I thought that being vegetarian would protect me against the ravages of cardiovascular disease. About 10 years ago, I had a heart attack. And I was in the hospital in New York, had angioplasty where they opened the artery. I had a stent inserted, two of them actually. And I was in the ICU overnight. My wife was on First Avenue looking to buy some vegetarian food because the menu in the hospital, and this is one of the foremost hospitals in the country, the menu had nothing on it that I could eat. Everything was perfectly designed to get you into the hospital and keep you there. It's true. I was watching CNN and I saw Bill Clinton being interviewed by the house doctor on CNN. Uh, Mr. Clinton had lost a lot of weight. He said he lost 30 pounds in 90 days. And the doctor asked him why, what was behind this? And Clinton said that after he had left the White House, he had had, I think it was triple bypass surgery. And that helped his chest pains and cardiac condition. But he said recently the pains had come back and he went back to his cardiologist and they said, Mr. President, there's nothing we can do for you. The nature of your uh, bypass operation and the stents that we put in after that have left you in a condition where there's nothing we can do. Your options are very limited or non-existent. Clinton didn't like the sound of that, and he asked his staff to research what else was there. And they came across the book, the well-known book now by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. And Clinton is talking about this. He's saying, you got to see this book. You have to see these pictures. They're incredible. Reversal of heart disease in sometimes in just three weeks. I I immediately called my wife and I said, forget the food, go to the bookstore and get the book. And she got the book. She came back to the hospital. We read it together in my ICU bed. And it was like the light bulb went on because I realized immediately that what had done me in was the cheese, eggs, oils, processed foods, And that's what had done me in. So we both converted immediately that night. We decided we're going all in, whole food, plant-based. 60 days later, I had lost about 20 pounds in 60 days. My blood pressure had dropped by about, the systolic had dropped by about 20 points. My cholesterol dropped from about 215 to 150. My LDL cholesterol, the so-called bad cholesterol, dropped from 140 to 90. And this is just in 60 days. Oh, and the most important was my C-reactive protein, which is a measure of inflammation. I had uh, had a checkup two weeks before my heart attack. So I was well aware of my numbers. My C-reactive protein uh, prior to converting to a whole food plant-based diet was 3.4. Anything above three is considered a danger zone, right? So I was in the red zone. 60 days later on a whole food plant-based lifestyle, I was at 0.6. Anything below one is considered very healthy in the green zone. I went back to the hospital for a checkup, and they could not believe the improvement in my numbers in 60 days. They said, what the heck are you doing? What's going on here? We do not have any drugs that will produce this kind of reversal. What are you doing? 
And I showed them Dr. Esselstyn's book. I said, don't you people know about this? They said, no, we never heard of it. So I bought them all a copy. I bought every cardiologist in the department a copy of the book. And then as we started to talk, dig into this more, I asked them what clinical trials had been done. Randomized clinical trials had been done to compare a plant-based diet to a, a control diet. And they said, next to nothing. There were very few trials. So I said, all right, let's talk about this. I'm prepared to fund such a trial. And we agreed that we would, the hospital would do a randomized control trial. It eventually, it involved 100 participants, 50 in one group and 50 in the other group. 50 were on a plant-based diet, wasn't even whole food plant-based. It was just plant-based. The other group was on the diet recommended by the American Heart Association for cardiovascular disease patients. And after eight weeks, the people on the plant-based diet saw a drop in their C-reactive protein that was four times as great as the people on the diet recommended by the American Heart Association. And this was amazing numbers. And the Wall Street Journal wrote it up, wrote up an article on this. And the research team wrote an article that was published in the Journal of the American Heart Association. And I've been told by cardiologists that uh, many consider it to be a landmark study. That's how I became plant-based and kept going. <laughs> well, just to share my follow up on your journey, mine started with a trip to the emergency room and the woman who treated me, I mean, I was sick. I was never been so sick in my life. And that was an expensive week. It was like $30,000. And I had between 105 and 106 degree fever. I, my blood pressure was off the charts. I mean, I should have stroked out. I really should have. But I think that was, I don't know, his way of getting pain, you know, <laughs> I need your attention. What was the cause? What was the cause? They never you, found out. And I really don't they care. They never found out. Mm. Because the woman who came to attend me was not only a medical doctor, but she was a nutritionist. And when I got out of the, I mean, she kept the whole week. What do you eat? What do you eat? And she kept harping on that. Like, sometimes you have to hit me over the head with a two by four, you know? And I, I finally went, oh, could it be the food? Hmm. <laughs> Cause I always thought I was a pretty relatively healthy eater. I don't know why I thought that, but now in hindsight, but um, she started me when I went to go see her as a nutritionist, she started me on prevent and reverse heart disease. And that was it. I read it in one night and I never looked back. So. Dr. Esselstyn has saved countless lives. Yes. I, 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 I admire the man and his wife, Anne, immensely. Oh, 100%. I've been to, they had uh, conferences called Plant Stock at their farm in upstate New York, which was featured in the movie, you know, Forks yes, Over Knives. Yeah. And yeah. I think I was at all of them. And it was, I couldn't say enough about it. It was, it was like reaffirming your faith, you know, going to these conferences every year and connecting with like-minded people that were either beginning their journey or were, you know, already immersed in it and wanted to connect with other life my like-minded people. So yeah, no, he mm. he profoundly influenced me and you know, I owe him a lot, not only for myself, but for my husband who's reversed multiple sclerosis. Duh. So Wonderful. you know, yeah. right, hundred percent. So, I mean, it's changed my life in so many ways, you know, between losing weight and um, reversing my high blood pressure and stopping migraines. I healed my thyroid, which was, I was told was physically impossible. So yeah, no, it's so powerful. It's so powerful. And women that were helping, you know, through the pregnancy advantage, you know, first of all, to get their their bodies ready for labor because they don't call it labor for nothing, number one. <laughs> Number two, but if we're going to change the next generation, we have to get to the mothers so that they yes. can start changing their diet because it will have with epigenetics, it will have a domino effect into the next generations. 
that's what our whole purpose is. And I saw it in the classroom as a classroom teacher for over 35 years. I saw it in the classroom and Dr. Shapiro saw it in her clinical practice, you know, women that were struggling to conceive and, Mm -hmm. oh, once they went on a plant-based diet, oh, it's a miracle, you know, and they get pregnant and it's insane. I mean, we did a summit and we talked about, you know, with quite a few women that started on this journey, including that woman who had stage four endometriosis and went on to have children. Three of the stories in my book are women who mention, they don't focus on it, but they mention they had trouble conceiving. And once they converted to the whole food plant-based diet, they conceived. That's true. And my grandson is now, he actually, his mother beta tested the program while we were (laughs) giving birth to it. And she had, you know, had no issues with delivery and went on to her, you know, he's almost two now. He almost never gets sick. He's on a plant-based lifestyle. He almost never gets sick. And if it does, it's like a day or something. And then he's done and he is happy. I mean, not to say that he doesn't cry ever, but he is such a happy camper. It's insane. Absolutely insane. How, I mean, he's just such a bubbly and bright kid because, and this is my thoughts, is that we're not giving him animal-based products if you're not breastfeeding, right? We're not giving them animal-based products so that, you know, because a baby can't say to you, oh, I don't like my stomach hurts. You know, all they can do is cry. And so he rarely cries and he's just such a happy baby and is so healthy. So it's, it's huge. It's huge. If I, uh, if I could interject in, um, in the book and in the film, both, uh, is a wonderful story of a young woman who uh, was very pregnant when they came to film her, right? And uh, she is one of the women who said that she had trouble conceiving, getting pregnant. And she was very depressed about it. And she suffered from anxiety, panic attacks, depression. She was overweight. And when she converted to a plant-based lifestyle, obviously she lost the excess weight. She lost the depression. She lost the anxiety. She lost the panic attacks. And she got pregnant. And (laughs) yeah. And and then it's a miracle. It's a miracle. And then uh, what happened was she she was like in her last month when they filmed her, right? And they went on to the film crew left, went to interview somebody else. And during that few weeks, she gave birth to the second child. So they came back and filmed her with her newborn infant. And there are scenes of that, you know, just wonderful scenes of that in the movie. And one of the things that she said was that, you know, she, her son, the older child was uh, about two and a half or three years old. And she said, they've raised him plant-based from day one. She said, he has never been sick, never gets ear infections, colds or anything, never been to the doctor other than for a checkup. And she says, I wish I had been raised like that. And I've, I understand. I feel the same way. And I was talking to my co-author, Dr. Scott Stoll. And I said, isn't that amazing that she's never been, uh, her child has never been to a doctor. And he said, well, neither have my children and they're adults. I raised them plant-based and they've never been sick. They're in their mid-20s and they've never been sick. Think about that. How many people can say that? They're 20 something years old and they've never been sick. That's remarkable. Uh, well, just to share another story is my husband, he was in the tech, tech field and, you know, an older person <laughs> compared to the young, young whippersnappers. He never missed a day of work and was physically fit, able to carry like certain, you know, very heavy servers. He worked in a data center and his peers were constantly being out sick, constantly. And one one of them had an appendix that he was having pain. So he went into the doctor and the doctor said, well, you're going to have to have an appendectomy. Okay, fine. 
Well, before he could get to the scheduled date for the surgery, he had to be rushed in and they did an emergency appendectomy and inside the appendix. Now, this is somebody who's in their early 30s. It was gangrene, gangrene. The surgeon said he'd never seen anything like it. And so when he got out of the hospital, they said, you need to be on a low fat diet. He lasted two weeks and that was it and went back to his old eating habits. And, you know, it just amazes me. I mean, he's got a wife and young children and, you know, he's endangering his health. But, you know, it's that food Incredible. addiction. And I get yes. it. Yeah, I get it. Because I'll be the first to go, hi, I'm Gene Schumacher. I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a food recovering addict. food act. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I am. But I've learned how to. And did you have any cravings, you know, when you went plant based? Did you still crave the cheese or was your heart attack, you know, like, yeah, no, I hit the brick wall. I I was all right with it. I, you know, I, I, you know, I found first off, I was a pizza holic. Okay. I would have pizza almost every day because I led a very frenetic life when I was working and there was a terrific pizzeria on the ground floor of my office building. So three, four days a week, I'd go down there and grab a pizza for lunch, and that was it. And uh, interestingly enough, I found out that about 30, 60 days after I converted, I couldn't stand the smell of pizza. It nauseates me. Interesting, right? Bacon was mine. I used to be a baconaholic. (laughs) Right. And and my literally my son would have knocked down drag outs over the last piece of bacon on the table, you know. <laughs> and now I, I can't even stand the smell of it. It just oh. it just skis me out. And we both have de- developed such a sensitivity. And five or six years ago, I made my I, you know, make my own dog's food. And mm-hmm. at that time, I would use a little bit of chicken mostly for flavoring. You know, it was like, I would say 80% plant-based, but a little bit of meat in there. And I couldn't stand the smell of it cooking in the house. So I put it in a crock pot and I would take it outside. Well, this one day it was 17 degrees and I'm like, yeah, it's not going to cook. So I took it into the garage and my husband went out to take the garbage or something, whatever. He went into the garage and he's like, oh my God, I think the septic backed up into the garage. I'm like, no, that's just the chicken cooking. Oh. That's how bad it smells to us now. But did you have any obstacles in going plant-based? Well, I had been a vegetarian for so long. So to the biggest issue for me was to give up pizza and cheese. I was never into eggs, so that was easy to drop. Cheese and processed foods, packaged processed foods. Yeah, that was that was hard. Banging that pleasure center. Ding, 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 ding. Right. Ding. Yes. Yeah. Your co author of this book, Disease Reversal Hope. What made you want to write this book? Since my heart attack, I have funded probably half a dozen clinical studies. In doing this, I l- met a lot of physicians, plant based and otherwise, got to meet a lot of people in the industry. I was asked to go on the board of the Plantrition Project, Ethos Farm Project, and other nonprofits in the plant-based world. So I got to meet a lot of people, and I got to hear a lot of stories. And I was very much swayed, impressed by these stories. And one day, it dawned on me, I'd never seen a book that had a bunch of these stories in it. These stories, you can find them everywhere, right? there. You find them on Forks Over Knives blog. You can find them on various outlets. You can, you can come across these stories. But there was no one book that collected them together. And I thought that people who uh, are suffering from a chronic disease and knew about this book might be interested in getting the book and finding the disease that's applicable to them, right? So we have a table of contents, but we also have a table of diseases. So they can look up their disease and read about one or more people that have suffered similar diseases and how they dealt with it. 
So that's how that came about. I got that idea and I called Dr. Stoll. Dr. Stoll is the chairman and co-founder of the Plantrition Project, which is probably the world's largest organization of plant-based physicians and healthcare professionals. There is the ACLM, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, which is a great organization, but the, uh, they don't necessarily advocate whole food plant-based. The plant, they emphasize plant-based eating, but it's not quite as rigorous as the Plantrition Project. I spoke to Scott and I pointed out to him one day, you know, there are literally thousands of peer-reviewed medical journals, right? So the highest standard of publication is peer-reviewed. Other physicians and researchers uh, read an article, research that's been submitted for publication, and they vet it to see if it's factual and makes sense, right? Uh, so uh, publications like the New England Journal of Medicine, the Journal of the American Medical Association, the Journal of Urology, Journal of the American College of Cardiology, and so forth, these are all peer-reviewed publications. And I pointed out to Scott that with the, all of these publications, thousands of them, there was not one publication devoted to re disease reversal. I said, now, how crazy is that? They, you know, <laughs> all kinds of drugs that they write up and procedures and devices and so forth, but nothing about reversing disease. I said, we should have a peer-reviewed, credible journal concentrating on disease reversal. And I said to him, if the Plantrition Project puts up half the money, I'll put up the other half. And so we launched it, right? We launched it. And if you, if you know who Dr. Kim Williams is, a terrific cardiologist, Kim was the chairman of cardiology at Rush Medical Center in Chicago. He's now at the University of Louisville heading up the cardiology department there. We lassoed him into becoming the editor-in-chief of the, the what we call it is the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention, IJDRP.org. <laughs> and it's free. People can read these research articles. They're terrific. And, uh, you know, hopefully... It'll gather more momentum and more readership. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's so powerful. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I met a lot of people suffering from chronic diseases through this. And I thought it would be great to have a book that had these stories. And then I thought, well, it's great to have the book. To have a movie is even better. So uh, all of this, by the way, the book and the movie and the work that I do is all nonprofit. My wife and I established a foundation. It's called the Purges Foundation. People can look it up, P-U-R-J-E-S foundation.org. The foundation owns the copyright to the book. The foundation owns the copyright to the movie. The foundation also owns a film called Eating You Alive. Foundation owns that. Same filmmakers as in Disease Reversal Hope. Terrific right? filmmakers, yeah. 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 No, the stories are amazing. They, they just, yes. they are. They're both incredible films. Absolutely. Well, so walk us through, what, what is a day of, in, in your life of food? Oh, a day in the life. <laughs> you mean if I remember to eat? That okay. is correct. <laughs> Breakfast is usually a lot of fruit, nuts, seeds, oatmeal. I only eat twice a day. Our, the second meal is in the middle of the afternoon. That, that will consist of a salad, all kinds of vegetables, tofu, beans, soup, whatever. I love it. I love soup, especially now it's starting to get a little chilly. Now it's getting cold, right. <laughs> 
soup. Yep. Love it. Love soup. I can eat soup yep. every day. Absolutely. Well, what are some of your favorite dishes? I like everything. I love fruit of all kinds. I find the more natural the food, the more I like it. I mean, I like cooked food also, but soup as an example, veggies. I mean, I'm very happy sitting down to a bowl of salad with some bread yeah. and water. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, it's Spartan, but it's healthy and it's satisfied. Yep. yep. 100%. I, I put some soy sauce on the salad okay. and I'm good to go. All right. Well, you, you, it appears you have a plethora of things to be proud of, but what's your, what, what is the thing that you're most proud of? Helping people. There's nothing in the, so, be- there's nothing better in the world to help someone and expect nothing in return. Yes. You can't buy that. No. So the best it. is, and it comes in so many ways, you know, uh, when I got, got involved with eating you alive, mm-hmm. we arranged to have it screened in 600 movie theaters in the, in the country. And, and we got an email from the projectionist at one of the movie theaters. We didn't know who she was, but she tracked us down and sent the filmmakers an email that said, I was the projectionist when your movie was exhibited in my theater. I was so impressed that I went home, threw out all my terrible food, converted to a whole food plant-based diet. I have lost 100 pounds in the last eight months, and you cannot believe how my life has changed for the better. When you get something like that out of the blue, right? I mean, you feel fantastic. It makes your day. Yes. It really does. And to know that you've helped others, it's just, yes. there's nothing better. Nothing better. Yeah. Well, what are three things that someone can do to to start this lifestyle? A journey, this journey, because that's what it is. Well, what I try and persuade people, um, I say, look, Try it for 30 days. What do you got to lose? If you don't feel better, go back to the way you were eating. But try it for 30 days. Worst thing that happens is you're going to feel the same as you feel right now. Best thing that's going to happen is all your aches and pains and diseases are going to disappear. How could this be a bad proposition? And I find that that, you know, convince them to do it. I find that that helps. That, that that's a good way to go. Unfortunately, though, the food addiction is real. Emotional eating is real. And it's tough with all the foods that are being created. They're against us. You know, I compare it to the tobacco industry. Like in the beginning of the tobacco industry, it was really difficult to like inhale the smoke, you know, without like coughing your lung out. So the mm-hmm. first thing they did was coat it in tobacco and coat it in sugar. And that was step one, so that people could then hold it in, the smoke into their lungs. And then the next thing that they did was they started adding additional nicotine to the cigarette so that you became more addicted. And I compare that to very much how the food industry has upped the amount of fat, sugar, and salt in our food. So, you know, it's insane how much that they've done. And if they hit that bliss point in your brain and like, you're like, oh my God, I got to have this again. And it's real. It's very real. So it's difficult to go up against that. And as you're driving down, it's in your face every mile that you're going. So it's a constant struggle. I find that once somebody has been on a whole food plant-based diet for 90 days, they lose the cravings yes. for the fast foods, the sugars, the processed foods. They say to me, I can't believe that I, I like this. This is so sweet. It's overwhelming. I can't take it. It's true. I just came off a fast of several days and 
I ate a piece of banana, like a just small piece of banana, because I was supposed to just do smoothies coming out of my fast, but <laughs> I couldn't stand it. <laughs> and I ate a little piece of it, and I was like, oh my God, it's so sweet. It's so sweet, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, it just it reset my palate, you know, for right. sure. And it was just so sweet, and I couldn't believe it. And yeah, and that's what plant-based living does, is it resets your palate, resets your taste buds, 100%. Yes. So. Rejuvenates them. Was well, there anything else you'd like to share about your journey, about the movie, about the book? Well, I think everyone should see the movie because it's very inspirational. And the book is also what, what people have said uh, to us, to me and Dr. Stoll, is that it's so wonderful and refreshing to have stories, right? Rather than have lectures, right? Most books you pick up. Not to say there's anything wrong with them, but you know they 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 can be a little dry, a little lectury, you know. Oh gosh, and, PubMed and, is awful. <laughs> yeah, that's research. I'm talking about all the books that have been written. Yeah, there have been many books written by plant-based physicians, and they're excellent books. But nothing is as good as a story. Yes, people love stories. People it's love true. to hear what other people like them have been going through, right. right? So for example, you mentioned multiple sclerosis, yes. right? At the beginning of the program. In the book, we have the story of Dr. Sarai Stanchik. Mm -hmm. Do you know her? Yes. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what an amazing story. She was supposed to be in a wheelchair when she was 50. Right. She ran the New Jersey Marathon. I know, right? How many how many people would MS run a marathon, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the movie and also in the book is another wonderful lady, Marcy Madrid, who diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And she went on a whole food plant-based diet, and the lesions in her brain disappeared. Now, most physicians will tell you that's not possible. Right. But she's got the photographic evidence that showed that. Yeah. Right. right. I, I know on and on stories like this, when you hear them, yeah. blow your mind. It, it's very inspirational. What I would say is if you haven't seen the movie, see it. You can download it as a streaming video, either as a rental or a purchase, or you can buy the DVD You can go to Amazon get both over there or Apple iTunes or other conduits where you can find the movie. Unfortunately, not on Netflix, but you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Apple iTunes. You can get it on other platforms. Watch the movie. It'll blow you away. Absolutely. hundred percent. You're right. The stories, hearing them coming from someone that has experienced it and to see the emotion on their face and to see the changes, it just, you know, it, it really just, it hits home on so many different levels. It has affected so many people in such powerful ways. I mean, one of the things that gives me great feeling is to hear the, these people tell their stories, and many of them have gone on to spread the word, to spread the message. So I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the stories is by a young man named Adam Sud. Adam was addicted to drugs. Adam was horribly depressed. Adam had all sorts of mental and physical issues, diabetes, obesity, on and on. And he converted to a whole plant food lifestyle. And he became convinced that the diet that he had before, the fast food junk diet that he lived on before, was a primary factor in his depression, anxiety, OCD, and other mental disorders that he suffered from. And he's so convinced of this that he has been funding clinical trials at a major university hospital to show that diet bad diet is behind this epidemic of mental disorders that we have in this country. They're all tied together. It's true. So, you know, 
I mean, it's wonderful to see things like this. It's the ripple effect. Yes. One of my students that I had, I had her for three years, you know, teaching chemistry, physics, and environmental science. And she had so many health issues, you know, from just to have, you know, being able to not study well, you know, getting that, you know, ADD, but she also had severe allergies to so many things that she was like limited, to like 12 things. It was on many, many medications and she went plant-based. And I remember her in 10th grade, she lost her dad to cancer. And so once she went plant-based, she realized that her dad could have survived, you know, if he had been, if they'd been on plant-based. And so she went on to, she was going to follow her father's footsteps in business, but she called me up crying one night while she was, he started her first year of college. And she says, I can't do this. I can't. And I said, what is your passion? And she says, I want to help people with cancer to convert to a plant-based lifestyle. So she went on, she got her, her undergrad, and then she went on to get her master's and she's now a registered dietitian working for the VA to help people with cancer to help Mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's that ripple effect, you know, that you can help other people. So, yes. well, Dan, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me here You're tonight. welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. It was wonderful meeting you. It was wonderful speaking with you. Thank you.